the doctor playing the guitar. So, and she is and around. she is fantastic. Is she does vocal healing. Up and, down. and I think like she ought to come and talk and at and our church. And I said, certainly. So that's what happened. Gwendolyn and I, and Gwendolyn okay. and I start talking back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, as you do on the internet. And last night she gave a concert. And what was so wonderful about the concert was that I got to sing because nobody was sitting next to me. <laughs> <laughs> you sing pretty well. Yeah. But we got to sing with her. We got to listen to her. We got to feel her energy, and it was so incredible. And so she's going to be back here today to talk about who she is, what she does, and how she does it. And possibly, are we going to get to sing with you today? I'm sure that will happen. I bet it will. And please welcome uh, Dr. Gwendolyn McClure. Hi again. Hi. Hi. When um, Gaudi was speaking, three songs came to me, and that's what happens. And so I'm going to start with one of them. It was the last one that came. And I think you'll be able to just understand as I'm singing how it came. So what I'd like you to do is just give yourself, oh, well, give yourselves permission to relax. And do you want help? Thank you. And um, see if you can kind of feel your spine, your skull, and the bones of the neck, and the bones all the way down. And imagine as though you're breathing through each of the vertebrae. And if at any time when I'm speaking or singing, you want to move, Please, it's not going to bother me at all. I'm going to feel honored that you feel comfortable to just take care of yourself. You know, whether it's moving your body or dancing or stretching or... Okay. Oh, the other thing is, let your uh, abdomen relax. So that when you're breathing and the pelvic sphincter muscles, let them relax and the abdomen relax. So as I'm singing, you opening and relaxing your abdomen is actually going to facilitate you receiving the fullness of what I'm giving through the song. You can relax now Come on and open your eyes Breathe deeply now singing to you. Oh my sweet, sweet child, who do you think you are? You are a child of God, and that will never change. But now you hear my voice and you can relax now. Come on and open your eyes and breathe deeply now. I am You are the love of my life. You are my one creation. You are eternity and that will never change. You had a dream. You 
misunderstood You thought we were separate But now you hear my voice And you can relax now Come on and open your eyes Breathe deeply now I am with you Oh my sweet, sweet child Who do you think you are? You are a child of God And I So just let yourself to hold more deep breaths in. So I just want to thank you, Donnie, for your meditation and your acknowledgement of what I feel is the primary issue for all human beings, which is that experience of separation from the divine, that's just the ultimate thing. In any given moment, am I at one with that awareness that I am loved, that I am love? Every single moment asking that question. And to, to, to recognize that our, our task, our primary task in this body, in this lifetime is to awaken to that question and awaken to the awareness that we are the res we are responsible not in the way in which sometimes when I say that word I can feel responsible <laughs> you know heavy right? not in that way in the way in which because I know I'm the one that's responsible It is my responsibility to find my, to either know that I am powerful enough to, to, to feel that I am love, or to find my way however I find my way. And I can feel that this center helps people find their way back to that awareness that I am not only responsible, but through that power and responsibility, I can open up, I, no one's blocking me, I can open up to that love. Do you feel me? Mm -hmm. do, you, do you feel what I'm saying? This is, I mean, I'm, I'm very moved right now by your meditation, and it just opened me up um, to that depth of awareness of the pain, you know, that I can still feel inside me for all the years that I felt separate and all the times that I still do sometimes feel that separateness and and the reason I feel like I'm crying is because my tears are the language of my heart because as you were speaking I literally opened I mean I was right with you and completely receiving you, trusting you, allowing myself to be led by you into that field of love within me. And sometimes just that feeling, it just, whatever's not healed then starts to also come up and be felt. And that is a healing experience. And so, <coughs> You know, I was feeling some butterflies and some nervousness because I feel really honored, you know, to be here. And I feel 
that this is a very special place and very special people who are very awake. And so I was feeling like in me, you know, I don't usually get that. I've been, whatever, public speaking, saying whatever for a long time. And I usually get, I didn't even get it last night once. But today I got it. I got this, kind of in my solar plexus. And, um, you know, I didn't, I don't have any notes. I didn't plan any lecture or anything. So I've been praying. You know, yesterday and today, this morning, that that the divine come through me when I'm when I'm with as I'm with you right now. And so when I was sitting there, I still was a little bit nervous that I didn't know what I was going to be saying. Really, you know, generally, yeah, but I didn't know anything specific. <laughs> so I didn't have that security. You know, sometimes when we plan it all out, control it, just to make sure we're safe, that's a nice feeling. <laughs> but I decided, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to let myself just open and be one. And see. <laughs> How's that working? <laughs> you tell me. How's that working? You know? Yay! Sounds good to me. <laughs> you know? It's, uh, we all have that the answer to how that's working, you know. For, how is it? So feel, feel in your heart. Are you feeling that I am open to you? Mm -hmm. And open to, to the divine here. So, so that's why that first song, the song is called You Can Relax Now. And it came to me at the very end of you speaking, and it, it's the song that relates to, it's a song on a, on a CD called uh, Songs for Your Inner Child. And it relates to us, being in that place of what I was describing before, of, of power, empowerment, responsibility, for connecting to that vulnerable child place within that experiences that separation. You know, that raw, primal place. And, and how, so, so when I do my, my healing work, in private sessions and it comes through also with groups but it's just easier to focus when I'm with one person because I can really feel them I'm, I'm helping people bridge between that vulnerable child and the adult self and, and, and developing and strengthening that capacity within us to hold ourselves to be as, as though Right, to me there's like three levels. It's like the divine, then it's us, the adult self, and then it's that raw, vulnerable child self inside. And so to be with that part of us that may feel vulnerable in the way that the divine is with our adult selves, the way in which the divine just is love. That's just what, that's just what how we're going to call it, the creator, God, the great spirit, is love. Pure love, unconditional love, acceptance. In the, in the embrace, in the holding of that unconditional acceptance, we can melt, we can heal. And anything that, you know, if we know absolutely beyond a shadow of a doubt that we are loved and accepted, anything that we're not accepting inside of us emerges. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So... What I'm here to communicate about today is my work, which I call vocal sound healing. And it's what, what that is, is the passive as well as active use of the human voice for healing and transformation of consciousness. And I work with sound, the literal making of sound, And sort of freeing one's capacity as a human being to open to your own voice as a, a tool uh, for healing in your life. Passive and active meaning passive. When I'm singing to you, you're passively in the moment receiving that 
active is when you're singing with me or you're making sound. That's active. You're actively operating your vocal cords. And uh, my dissertation incorporates um, cultural anthropology, music therapy, and Jungian psychology, Carl Jung. The cultural anthropology part draws upon indigenous cultures, wisdom, back, it's debated, you know, 40,000 back to 70,000 years of cave paintings and just information that indicates that vocal sound and singing was used and is used and has always been used in the indigenous cultures for healing and transformation of consciousness. Vocal sound is vibration, just the way dance and drumming is used to alter frequencies, to alter consciousness, to, to break things up, to shift. And with the intention of healing, that's with those, you know, with those modalities, absolutely any healing is possible. So when I started, um, my work came to me just literally in a flash, like in the cartoons with the light bulb. <laughs> one day in June, I don't remember the exact date, but it was the month of June, 1990. I just downloaded. Now I didn't, that word didn't even exist in my vocabulary in 1990, but now that we have the word download, <laughs> I can use it. <laughs> the information just went. <laughs> Right, the whole thing, the whole body of knowledge. Uh, I've been, I've been trained somewhat um, in art therapy and dance movement therapy, and it came to me. Well, what about voice therapy? What about using the human voice as a medium, as a conduit, as a modality for bringing in healing? <sighs> so then I just designed my first workshop, and on the computer, right then and there. I just <coughs> I had a you know a little Macintosh, and, but there was no World Wide Web. I mean, there actually was a World Wide Web in 1990, but I didn't have it. You know, I didn't have access to it. So anyway, I designed the flyer, and August 4th was my very first whatever coming out. You know, of, of the work to the world. So and it's been evolving and evolving and evolving, and um, uh, October. 2012, I, I, I leaped, and I left, my, I left the job I had, and uh, regular, you know, paycheck, I guess you'd say, and I leaped into the, uh, <laughs> what would you call it? I miss the void, great, I miss <laughs> <laughs> I just left, you know, yeah, yeah. off and... Off the prison, yeah, right. into the wall, uh, no. <laughs> you know, to, with the intention that I was going to be bringing my vocal sound healing work. I think you left it to God's arms. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're pretty amazing, Tom. Does she do this to you? <laughs> Why do you keep coming back? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know, I've been scared sometimes and et cetera, et cetera. And I, you know, I, I met Sean at a, it was a conference in September in Sedona where I was a presenter. And I wasn't like one of the big, you know, keynote presenters. And I was um, offering a workshop and a breakout session in between the other things and I, I did a vocal healing concert like last night and then um, a vocal healing journey workshop like I'm going to be doing today and, and Sean came to both of those and he came first to the concert and then did the workshop and I appreciated that you know I could I could feel his energy looking at me he's very intense you know that's all you see <laughs> And I couldn't quite tell what he was thinking, but I could feel something was really intensely going on there. And then when he came for the workshop, I said, oh, so it must be good. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. And, um, and then, I don't know, uh, maybe a couple months later, I just had this... I, he was 
you know, only one of three people that took my workshop. And and anyway, I took I took uh, everyone's uh, email and, and phone number. And a couple of months later, I I had a strong feeling to call him. <laughs> like okay, <laughs> so I did. I, I like to follow, you know, those feelings, those intuitions. Just mm -hmm. allow myself to this. Okay, I don't know why, and I got on the phone with him. And honestly, I can't remember why, but I I think. I had a song to sing. That happens for me. I just start thinking of someone, then a song comes, and maybe I just called and sang to him. Or maybe, I'm just almost sitting next to you, I feel like I'm getting, <laughs> I'm opening, opening, opening. Maybe what it was is that I was supposed to call him because then after that conversation, I think he said, was going to talk to you, or he did talk to you, and then emailed me and said, I talked to Dottie because I think it would be great to have you come and speak at the center. So. We're glad you did. And here you are. Yay! Thank you. 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 So, part of my reason I wanted to share about that that leap I took, and that's what led me here today in this moment to be together, is that we're each we're each, as Daddy was mentioning, we each are a unique being on this planet. Every single one of us is a completely unique divine and special being and what I'm here to support people in doing is experiencing themselves as that and the, the recognition that your voice is one of the ways that you can allow a flow of that uniqueness of who you are to come up and out of you. You with me? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And that is a very s simple thing to say. I mean, maybe I hesitate a little bit. It's basically a simple concept. However, That's a big deal, a very big deal, to experience oneself as unique and special, to have the awareness of that, be it the so that you're the source of that awareness. No one can take it away from you or give it to you, really. People can facilitate you f forgetting your uniqueness by somehow coming in an injuring way towards you and then you can lose your sense of source and then identify with that and so my job is always then to withdraw the energy from identifying outside of you and, and people can facilitate your awareness that you are the source of knowing that you're unique loving your uniqueness and then taking it on the road so to speak bringing that out to the world in whatever way that is you know the sky's the limit is absolutely infinite as to how you could do that or would do that there is absolutely you know lo no limits right <laughs> which is exciting once you get to that place where you can feel right, the the truth of I'm at the source, yes I am unique, and then and, and then the flow, the open channel of your being to I so that's my job is I help people clear, 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 clear the passage, clear the passage of your self, your authentic self coming out to the world in whatever way. When I say the world, 
you know, it might be just sharing something with one person, right? When I just shared with you, Di, earlier, the depth of impact you had on me, that was my unique perception receiving of you. I opened up and I turned and I shared it with her. So one-on-one -on -one that everyone witnessed, but that's my authentic truth. And you received that, right? So we, I, I say we because this is something I, I've worked with, you know, I'm 53, so as soon as I kind of woke up to, to my responsibility for myself, which was about maybe 27, really, I realized I wasn't perfect. Oh. <laughs> which was a great thing. You know, sort of both horrifying and uh, fantastic. And how did you find out you were? Several years ago. <laughs> 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 but I had to claim, you know, kind of claim the wounds long enough to bring in the healing life for them to heal. Right. right. <laughs> you know? Hallelujah. <laughs> All right, so now a song just came. So again, as I'm singing, breathe. I am the light of the living God. Spirit moves through me. I am the light of the living God, and peace is my destiny. I am the love of the giving God, Spirit moves through me. I am the love of the giving God, and peace is my destiny. I'm traveling through eternity, unraveling my humanity. The darkest night and the deepest pain brings me back to my soul again and again and again and again. We forget, then we remember, we forget. Then we remember, we forget. Then we remember the truth of who we really are. I am the light of the living God. Spirit moves through me. I am the light of the living God. Peace is my destiny, and love is my ecstasy, and joy is my family. CD, uh, when was that? This year. Yeah, so it's been a dream for never, you know, 30 or more years. And, uh, you know, sometimes things take a long time. Sometimes we have to battle the, the parts within us that would fight, fight us from feeling happy and confident to be who we are. And uh, it took a long time for that to come into manifest form, so I'm super happy. And the first song is Dragonfly and that, and I sang that last night. Ah, da, 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 da. So, oh, um, does anybody have anything to say or ask? Yes? I had a friend. Well, I still hope he's still my friend. Philip <laughs> <laughs> Garay, um, and he was quite a musician, and he led orchestras professionally and in high schools, and anywhere anybody would take him. And when he died, I talked to him uh, when he was on the other side. And I think this is what you're saying. He says, on the other side, every note 
has an octave of notes. Wow. And so when you are on this side, no matter what you do, you never quite get there. You can't quite make the sound you want to make. And uh, that's what you're doing. Thank you. bringing forth all those extra notes. Thank you. And when you were talking, a song came for you and for okay, everyone. Good. Breathing deeply. We will get there. Heaven knows how we will get there. I know we will. And if you want to sing that, I'm going to repeat that now. We will get there. Heaven knows how. that sometimes we have to, to sing or even just to make right sound express yourself like I was talking about before and uh, one of the things I address in my dissertation is that you know we used to be a long time ago an oracular people meaning oral right an oral based people who shared stories around the fire and sang songs and then over time you know came in writing right and so writing is amazing however in the transition from you know oracular to written one of the things that happened was we lost the embodied knowledge of the of the power of our voice in the context of community. And then there came there came a time where it's like, oh that that person sings, right? And a, a separation between performer and audience. And so yeah, one of the reasons I'm here on the planet is to reclaim reclaim to help people remember. He 
Did you have any special um, voice training? 